So in this problem, it's given that which of the following option represents the coordinate of the remaining vertices of a square given the two opposite vertices uh, which are located at the coordinates 3, 4 and 1, negative 1. Let's try to understand this with the help of a diagram. Let us suppose that we have a square whose vertices are A, B, C and D. Now we are provided with the coordinates of two of the vertices which are opposite to each other. So let's say if A has the coordinate 3, 4, then the vertex which is opposite to it, that's going to be C, it's having a coordinate 1, negative 1. Now using this, we need to find out the value of the coordinates of B and coordinates of D. So to begin with, what we'll do, we'll start with B. So let's say the coordinate of B is X, Y. Uh, we will come to D in a moment. Now, uh, well, let's try to find out the coordinate of B, that means finding out the value of X and Y. All we have to do is join the point A and C, which is going to give us the diagonal of the square. Now, clearly we know that the length of AB, that's exactly going to be equals to the length BC. The reason is it's a square, all sides of a square are equal. Now, if we can find out the length of uh, AB and the length of BC and then equate it with each other, that is going to help us find out the value of X and Y. The, uh, for this, what we'll do, we'll use the distance formula. So the distance formula is specified here in the diagram. So let's say we have two points, point A and point B. A has the coordinate x1, y1 and B has the coordinate x2, y2. The, the distance between point A and B, which is a straight line, the, this can be obtained by using the distance formula, which is simply take the square root underneath the square root. First, what we'll do, we'll take the square of the difference of the x coordinate, so that's x2 minus x1, and add it to the square of the difference of the y coordinates. So, using the distance formula, let's first try to find out the value of AB. So, AB, that's going to be simply take the square root. Now, what we'll do, we will consider x, y to be. Mm, x2, y2. Let's say this is equivalent to x2, y2. So that's totally your choice. And 3, 4, which is the coordinate of point A, we're going to consider it to be x1, y1. Fine. Now, what we have to do, we have to do x2 minus x1. So x2 minus x1, that's going to be x minus 3. So that's the difference of the x coordinate. We can square it. And then add it to the difference of the y coordinate, which is simply y2 minus y1. That means we have y minus 4 whole squared. And this will be equals to the length BC. The so length BC, what we'll do? We'll take the square root underneath the square root. What we'll do? We'll do the difference of the x coordinate. So let's do x minus 1. The so x minus 1, that's the difference of the x coordinate. We'll square it and then add it to the difference of the y coordinate. So that's y minus of negative 1. So we will get positive 1. So we get y plus 1 whole squared. Now, this is an equation and on both sides we have a square root. So what we can do? We can square both sides and that's going to help guess get rid of the square root. So let means let's square both sides. So we're going to square both sides. And that's going to get rid of the square root. And now we are left with x minus 3 whole squared plus y minus 4 whole squared. And this will be equals to x minus 1 whole squared plus y plus 1 whole squared. Now, well, let's further simplify. This is going to help us find out the value of x and y. Now, what we'll do, we'll expand x minus 3 whole squared by using the identity a minus b whole squared. So we have a squared minus b, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So that's going to give us x squared minus 2ab means 2 times x times 3. So that's 6x plus b squared. So b squared here will be 3 squared. So that's 9. Similarly, y minus 4 whole squared will become y squared minus 8y plus 16. This will be equals to x, is x minus 1 whole squared, which is x squared minus 2x plus 1, added to y plus 1 whole squared, so that's y squared plus 2y plus 1. Now we can immediately cancel out x squared from both sides. We can also cancel out y squared from both sides. So this is going to give us a equation. So let's solve for that. So we have negative 6x negative 8y on the left hand side so what we'll do we'll transpose this negative 2x to the left hand side to get positive 2x also we'll transpose positive 2y to get negative 2y on the left hand side and on the right hand side we're left with 1 plus 1 so that's 2 and we're going to subtract this 9 plus 16 which is 25 so we're going to take a uh, transpose 25 to the right hand side and subtract it from 2 so negative 6x positive 2x that's going to be negative 4x then we have negative 8y negative 2y that's 10y this will be equals to 2 minus 25 will be negative 23. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's isolate y from here. So we have negative 10y. So this will be equals to 4x minus 23. 
or simply y will be equals to 23 minus 4x divided by 10. So this is the value of y. Let's set it aside for the time being and we're going to label this as number 1. Okay, now ABC clearly is a right angle triangle which is right angled at B. So we have in right triangle which is ABC, it's right angled at B. We can use the Pythagoras theorem. So the Pythagoras theorem will be AC squared. That's the square of the hypotenuse. That will be equals to the square of AB squared and add it to square of BC. So we have AB squared plus BC squared. Now we have the formulas here. We have obtained the value of AB. We have obtained the value of BC. Now we'll find out the value of AC using distance formula. We again have to apply the distance formula here. So what's AC? The AC will be simply, since there's a square here, so we are not writing the square root here because that gets taken care of. So AC squared will be simply the difference of the X coordinate. So let's do 3 minus 1. So we have 3 minus 1 whole squared. Add it to, uh, we have the difference of the Y coordinate. So we have 4 minus negative 1. So that's simply 4 plus 1 whole squared. So this will be equals to AB squared. We have already found out AB squared. So that's X minus 3 whole squared plus y minus 4 whole squared and this will be added to bc squared so bc squared is x minus 1 whole squared plus y plus 1 whole squared okay let's further simplify this now let's expand each of the terms so we have 3 minus 1 that's 2 squared added to 4 plus 1 so that's 5 squared that will be equals to we have x minus 3 whole squared so that's x squared minus 6x plus 9 that will be added to y minus 4 whole squares, which is y squared minus 8y plus 16. Then we have x minus 1 whole squared, so its expansion will be x squared minus 2x plus 1. Added to y plus 1 whole squared, so that's y squared plus 2y plus 1. So now we have 2 squared, that's 4. 5 squared, that's uh, 25. This will be equals to so x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Then we have y squared plus y squared, that's 2y squared. Then we have negative 6x, negative 2x, and that's negative 8x. Negative 8y plus 2y, so that's negative 6y. And let's add up all the constants. So 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 plus 1 is 26. 26 plus 1, that's 27. So we have, so let's uh, uh, flip the left-hand side and the right-hand side. We have 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 8x minus 6y plus 27 equals to 25 plus 4, so that's 29. So we have x squared plus 2y squared minus 8x minus 6y. So 20 will transpose 29 to the left hand side and combine with 27. So we have 27 minus 29. So that's going to be negative 2. Now, clearly each term, we can see those are factors of 2. So we can factor out 2. So we have 2 times x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 3y minus 1 equals to 0. Now 2 cannot be equals to 0. So that means x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 3y minus 1 must be equals to 0. Now what we'll do, we'll take the help of equation number 1. We'll replace y value with 23 minus 4x over 10. And that's going to help us evaluate the value of x. So let's do that. So we have x squared plus y squared. Now instead of y squared, we have 23 minus 4x divided by 10 whole squared minus we have 4x minus 3y now instead of uh, y we have 23 minus 4x over 10 minus 1 equals to 0 now we have the equation uh, in terms of x so let's simplify this we have x squared plus so we have 1 over 10 uh, as the factor so when we square it that becomes 1 over 100 this will be multiplied to 23 minus 4x whole squared we'll do it in the next step minus 4x minus 3 over 10 multiplied to 23 minus 4x minus 1 equals to 0. So that gets x squared plus 1 over 100 multiplied to 23 squared. So 23 squared is 529 minus 2 times 23 times 4, 184x plus 4x whole squared. That will be 16x squared minus 4x minus so 3 times 23 will be 69 over 10 then negative 3 over 10 multiplied to negative 4x so that's what is going to be positive 12 over 10 multiplied by x minus 1 equals to 0 okay let's further simplify so we're going to multiply throughout with 100 we have 100x squared plus 
529 minus 184x plus 16x squared. Then minus, we have to multiply 4x with 100, so we get 400x. Minus, so 100 times 69 over 10, that's going to be 690. Plus 120x minus 100 equals to 0. So now we have 100x squared plus 16x squared, that will be 116x squared. Then we have negative 184x added to positive 120x, so this will be negative 64x. Oh, there's also a 400 here, so we have 464x. Okay. This is also taken care of. Now we have 529 minus 690 minus 100. That means we have 529 minus 790. That gives us negative 261. That's equals to 0. Now what we'll do, we'll factor out 116. So if we factor out 116 from each of the terms, so we have x squared minus the 116 times 4 gives us 464. Now, uh, 116 multiplied to 9 over 4, that's going to give us 261. So this is going to simplify since 116 cannot be equals to 0. So x squared minus 4x minus 9 over 4, that's equals to 0. Fine. So now what we can do, we can use the standard form of quadratic equation to sort of find the value of x. So x will be equals to negative of negative p plus or minus square root of negative 4 whole squared minus 4 times 1. That's the coefficient of x squared times the constant. So that's negative 9 over 4 whole divided by 2 times the coefficient of x squared. Let's solve for x. So we have 4 plus or minus square root of 16 plus 9 all divided by 2 so we get 4 plus or minus square root of 25 divided by 2 which is simply 4 plus or minus 5 over 2 so we're going to get two values for x so x could be 4 plus 5 over 2 so this is one value or we could get x equals to 4 minus 5 over 2 solving we get 9 over 2 and x is negative half so we have obtained two values of x now we will go back to equation number one where we specify the value of y so for each values of x we'll get the uh, corresponding value of y so from one we have y given by 23 minus 4x divided by 10. so when our x value that corresponds to 9 over 2 that implies y will be equals to 23 minus 4 times 9 over 2 divided by 10 so we have 23 minus so 2 times 2 is 4 9 times 2 that's going to be 18 so we have 23 minus 18 over 10 so 23 minus 18 that's 5 over 10 or simply half so that means when x equals 9 over 2 then y will be half and let's consider the other value as well so when x is negative half then this implies that y value will be 23 minus 4 multiplied to negative half whole divided by 10 so we have 23 plus 2 divided by 10 so that's going to be 25 over 10 or simply 5 over 2 so we have finally obtained the value so one value corresponds to 9 over 2 and half and the other value is negative half and 5 over 2 so these are the two vertices of the square so out of the four options, so option C is the correct answer. So that means code in B, it could be either 9 over 2. So let's take B as 9 over 2 comma half and uh, the code in of D, that's going to be negative half and 5 over 